Paul, um, call this meeting to order, and I'm going to ask uh, Lewis Jones to give the invocation. Bow our heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that you are always near us and beside us in all that we do. We ask that you be with us this evening as we consider the affairs of our city. Guide us and direct us in the decisions that we make and our postures and how we consider the affairs of our city. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. 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 Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you all very much. Okay. Roll call. Mayor, all present, excluding Ms. Abbott. We don't need to do roll call since we're in the chamber. Okay. Uh, no pro problem. Um, now, I understand for certification of closed session, several council members requested that we continue. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have same. So we will reconvene, uh, you know, with the request of several council members, you know, after formal session. Is why don't that okay? you Why don't you go ahead and certify the closed session that you've had, and then we'll do a new motion to go back into a closed session and certify that. Okay, one that'd afterwards. be great. Okay, and uh, that being said, request uh, a motion to certify the closed session. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Vote. Councilmember Ab absent. Councilmember Berlucci. Aye. Councilmember Henley. Aye. Councilmember Jones. Aye. Councilmember Moss. Yes, but let the record reflect I exited on the on the time of the issue in which I have a conflict of interest being a dome site and have a letter on file and let the record reflect when I re entered the executive session. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Moss. I have the times. Thank you. Councilmember Rouse. Aye. Councilmember Tower. Aye. Councilmember Wilson. Aye. Councilmember Wooten. Aye. Vice Mayor Wood. Aye. Mayor Dyer. Aye. By a vote of 10 to 0, you've certified the closed session to be in accordance with the motion to recess. Okay, great. And now, um, can we uh, um, have a motion to approve the uh, minutes of the special se session of September 8, 2020? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk? Councilmember Berlucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of 10 to 0, you've approved the minutes as submitted. Uh, Mr. Mayor, yes. A point of clarification. Um, Will you turn your microphone on, please? Thank point you. Point of clarification. What members, and you don't have to vote, but uh, you said there were several members that wanted to continue the closed session? Yes, that is correct. Uh, I am, you know, I am bewildered as to what seven. Okay. Um, several, I think. Yeah, yeah, there were several not, members that several, requested. Several. Yeah, yeah to several. Conti uh, continue the conversation, you know, after our formal session. Yes. I, well, it was, it was my understanding, and maybe wrong, but I'm I'm not aware. Do we need to take a vote on several members that want to continue the closed session? Because I'm not one of them. As I suggested, you would entertain a new motion. We'll, we'll vote on the motion. A new motion, and you'll have the opportunity to okay. vote on it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Okay, at this point, uh, move forward with a public hearing on the acquisition by agreement or condemnation, property, temporary, or permanent um, easements necessary for the Princess Anne Plaza at North London Bridge Creek Pump Station Project, CIP um, 7 089. The first speaker is Conrad Schisventer, and after Mr. Schisventer is Barbara Messner. Good evening. It's been a long time since I've been here. <laughs> well, I know all you guys personally, and I know how seriously you take this job, especially the concept of the possibility of taking over or condemning private property for specific public use. And I want to assure you that this public use is very important. We are going to need a pumping station in that area. So please favorably consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Barbara Messner. After Mr. Ms. Messner is Anita Lowe.
Good evening, Ms. Messner. Good evening. Uh, I appreciate Mr. Rouse's comments, and I don't appreciate That's your right. having a scheduled meeting that isn't advertised in the beacon, it isn't on the city's event calendar, and then you yeah. tell, uh, when I called to, to sign up, uh, uh, ma'am, okay. could you please? I'm talking the... about due process. Yeah. I'm talking about due process for this meeting this and this item. Um, and the fact that, you know, there's nobody wiping, which is fine because y'all do not wear a mask. You know, it's on and off. Um, yes, uh, condemnation. We should not condemn anyone's property. And um, it's been uncontrolled growth for 20 years uh, on steroids for the last 10. So here you want to fix pump stations to address storm drains when, you, uh, when there's flooding everywhere? Uh, this is ridiculous. Uh, as CIP, that's more taxpayer money. Mr. Moss, when, when you ran in 2011, you talked about the, you know, all the projects that were unfunded. You know, uh, anyway, I oppose anything by condemnation for whatever reasons because you create your own problems and I object strongly. Thank you. The next speaker is Anita Lowe and after Miss Lowe is Virginia Wasserberg. <laughs> Good evening. Hello. Excuse me. Um, I'm here to ask you to su support this uh, this uh, public hearing that we're talking about tonight. This pump station. I've lived in this house on 3113 Ferry Farm Lane, which is directly across the street from the Plaza Annex building, formerly Plaza Elementary. I've lived there 33 years. I have watched that neighborhood, that area grow. We had to buy flood insurance when we bought that house. We had no idea we were buying in a flood zone until the day we closed on that house. And we never thought that we were ever going to need it. We slowly watched the rains come. They filled up the yard. They eventually started filling our sheds up. They started damaging our power equipment. Our, couldn't leave anything of value down low and eventually they made it into the house. And they made it into the houses of the neighbors all around us. We have watched, we have an easeway behind our house that the city says that the residents are supposedly supposed to keep clean. But my husband has been doing that job by himself for the last 33 years and now he is disabled, retired, can no longer go out there. You are welcome to come out and see what the easeway looks like today. It is a jungle. And there's a drain in there, and that's supposed to help the flow of the water from that neighborhood. It does nothing as it stands right now. And it did very little when he kept it clean. Um, I ask you to support it because I'm tired of living in fear of the next storm. It no longer needs to be a tropical depression. It only needs to be a, uh, a nice spring thunderstorm. And we're watching the water come up to the house, waiting and praying that it doesn't come in the house. Hurricane uh, Matthew hit us. We are still re, um, getting, coming back together after that. Uh, our first in-house storm was a nor'eastern of 2009 and I can't even have the time to tell you all the storms that have hit us in between. Uh, I believe this property that you have picked, you know, I, I'm not out there to say that we need to take somebody else's land to <coughs> fix a problem that should have been fixed, but it, there's no, it hasn't been developed. They don't need to tear anything down from what I can tell. And I ask you to, to purchase that land at the best way you can to do it so that we can, so I can live out the last of my days in that home without fear of flooding. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. The next speaker is Virginia Wasserberg. 
And after Ms. Wasserberg, um, the last speaker will be by WebEx, Betty Warren. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, I'm here in support of, uh, of, of this acquisition of the property. I've spoken with uh, a number of you and, and let you know that. Um, you know, uh, I, I, it's my understanding that the classification of condemnation means that somebody will be paid, so it's not like you're just going to take someone's property away from them and not compensate them, and I, I appreciate that. And uh, I just wanted to say that I'm in support of whatever it takes, whatever it takes, however much it takes to get this done, then let's get it done. And I just wanted to go through three basic reasons as to why I'm in support of that. First reason is that the city, the city staff, they have a good plan. It's a good plan. Um, the property is open space in an area that is built, and that is hard to find in that area of our city. Um, it's a, a minimally invasive uh, plan where you're not really going to be knocking down any buildings. You're not going to be having to raise any roads with uh, this property that the staff has recommended. And it's really the best site for the price. And so um, that, that, that's why the city staff did a good job. They do a good job. We have a great city staff. And they've worked really hard on this. And um, I think they should be supported for that. Uh, second reason is uh, the money's there. You funded a CIP for this. And uh, you put it in the six-year CIP. So you have the money. So let's, let's use it. And the third reason is flooding happens. You just heard from Ms. Lowe, who lives, it, who lives there and has watched it and lived through it. Uh, I spoke with a friend of mine who lived next to Ms. Lowe and um, the Obink family at 3109 Ferry Farm Lane. And they had 23 inches of water in their house in 2016 when Hurricane Matthew hit. They had two children and uh, wife was pregnant. And they had to live through that nightmare. They don't, they don't live there anymore because they, they, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. And uh, just like I don't, I don't live in the house that I flooded in because I just couldn't do it again. You know, props to Ms. Lowe and Mr. Lowe for wanting to keep going through it. There's a lot of people who just, who just can't keep living this way. You know, we can't keep being in fear of our lives flooding. We can't be in fear of every time that it rains that this happens. So flooding happens, and there's been decades of delay in getting this done, and it's time to stop delaying. The money's there. The staff has a good plan. Let's do it, OK? Thank you. Thanks a lot. The last speaker mayor is Miss Betty Warren, and she's going to participate via WebEx. Miss Warren, if you will pause two to three seconds before beginning your comments. And if there is a problem on our end and we can't hear you, I will advise. Otherwise, you can begin your comments. Ms. Warren, if you could begin your comments. Seems that Miss Warren's microphone's not working on her on her end. That's all the speakers, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on, we're going to go into ordinance resolutions. I understand we have a speaker on there, so I'm going to read the uh, script for speakers. Um, I want to remind everyone that the City Council speaker policy that allows certain representative of groups to speak for 10 minutes applies only to planning items. All other speakers, whether speaking individually or on behalf of a group, will have three minutes to speak. Speakers are reminded that comments during the formal portion of the meeting must be limited to the subject of the item that is being considered by the council at the time you are called. When speakers are called on each item, the clerk will call for those individuals who have signed up to speak. After those who have signed up to speak have spoken, the chair will ask if there are any other persons who wish to speak on the item at hand. Those speakers will be allowed to speak and will be asked to give their name, address, and telephone number for the clerk to record. We have several items 
with only one speaker signed up. As such, the city clerk will call the speaker and identify each item they have registered on. The speaker will receive three minutes to comment on each item. Again, the speaker must limit his or hers own comments to the subject matter of the items they have signed up to address. Finally, I call upon all speakers and all persons in the chamber to be civil in their discussion and decorum. Whatever views you hold and wish to express, the City Council wants to hear from you and ensure that all viewpoints and all persons are res uh, respected. The best way to do this is for all of us to strive for civility and respect. Okay, that being said, moving forward to ordinances and resolutions, I understand we have a speaker. And Mayor, can I just clarify? So we have uh, uh, one speaker that has signed up on every item, um, including all planning items. However, I know there's a few planning items that you have going to be heard. Do she, you want her to speak on every item at this point? Yeah. Not yes. just con yeah. not just ordinances and resolutions. Correct? Yeah, I'll call a special planning. Uh, you, you know, for. for Okay, but so I just public just hearing on planning before we get the planning. Today. So, Ms. Messner, the first item is ordinance and resolutions number one to extend the provisions of the, the COVID 19 disaster. Um, okay, and for those who are viewing, and I appreciate Mr. Moss's comments. Um, you know, that the city staff is taking up a, a lot of the seats and a lot of people don't come because there isn't Ms. Seats. Messner, if we okay. could stick to this these is... items. And, you know, th okay. that I was established in the speaker policy I just read. I I'm aware. I'm aware. But I, I tried to watch today. I didn't have the full agenda. I, I learned things that were, you changed things from what was the, on the printed agenda, and that's what we're voting on. Okay, and I, it's important that I address this. Um, okay, extend, extend uh, the provisions of the ordinance previously adopted on March 31st, 2020, to ensure continuity of government during the COVID-19 disaster. Okay, I've held this up many times. You know, these things are not properly signed. The documents are not properly signed. Um, they're not witnessed. And I looked up again the, the clerk's duty. It's to uh, witness all documents. Um, no one witnesses. Um, you know, there's, there's multiple documents where there's initials of city staff and council members initialing things. And, you know, the pandemic, it's on, off, problems with counting. And these are meetings where city council does and does not wear masks. Okay, Ms. Messner, okay. with due respect, we're talking about item number one under ordinances and resolutions. Right, it's extending uh, the March 31st thing, which I do not consider a legal document, and you're trying to extend a document that I do not consider legal. It's not witnessed and notarized. This is not due process. And you're spending a fortune of air tax dollars. You find money for everything. You're using tragedy funds and COVID funds um, to give away masks and, you know, to total strangers. So uh, I oppose the way you're spending air money. And as far as the people saying, you know, the CIP, it's gonna be a long time before that's built. You know, the FEMA money went to the oceanfront. So, you know, all right. So that's uh, ordinance one, which you're extending something that I consider to be illegal. And I think everyone should should be reading the full agenda. Thank you. Uh, you okay. can move to item number two, please. Yes, thank you. Um, amend the due date recommendations of the Convention and Visitors Bureau um, Community Task Force. 
You keep expanding government task force. God bless you. Um, you know, the convention, we should be having this meeting. If you're going to have social distancing, this should be at the uh, convention center. I spoke to Ms. Henley and Ms. Wooten, and, you know, when I listened to some of the things, y'all said that there weren't any objections. There are objections on the record. Um, and she said that the reason was because of the, uh, the loud speakers. You couldn't control the speakers. It's over 30 million that we spend um, just for IT. So, um, yeah, amend. You shouldn't be amending anything. Amend the recommendations of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. You've taken out extra money to advertise on TV. You're competing against all these other states. So um, you're spending a lot of money, and I oppose not having this with, if you have social distancing. Okay, uh, item three. Um, resolution to renew permit to allow medical transport uh, LLC, that's a private um, ambulance service, to operate in the city. And there were conflicts. If, if any of the council members read the full 653-page agenda, which was just opened up around 1.30 today, which is not enough time to read, um, you know, there are conflicts. There are, there are conflicts with the, uh, with the applicant. So I object. The city, city staff should be handling public safety for our city. And if, if you can't, uh, 460,000 residents and 15 million uh, visitors. If you can't handle it, then you're having too many events and you're allowing too much construction. So we should have um, official city staff taking care of medical transport. Okay, item four. Resolution to authorize the distribution of a preliminary official statement and other actions for a issuance of water and sewer revenue refunding bond series 2020. Um, we're deep, deep, deep in debt. You find money for certain things. Um, you're not addressing the, the bonds that we have. And um, as I've said many times, you know, we have pump stations. I, have, I send y'all pictures all the time of pump stations flooding. Um, yeah, it, it's all over the city. Um, so I oppose new debt. There's people that have lost jobs. And, and the state and the city are giving selectively giving money to some businesses and not others. And, you know, you're picking and choosing who gets to stay in business and who, who loses everything and sells their house and then somebody can scoop it up and make it a short-term rental. Okay, item four. Resolution. Number five. Number five. Okay, what's, oh, five, thank you. Ordinance to carry forward and appropriate two million two hundred fifty-three thousand four hundred and eleven to the 2020-2021 operating budget. We've already finalized the budget. Ray purposes previously approved. You know why are we moving things around and carrying forward and appropriating money when we've already finalized a budget? I oppose with the way uh, the way the city runs uh, runs our, our land, our public safety, and our money. Item six, mm -hmm. and if this had been advertised properly, there would be more people that were aware. But most people don't anticipate a meeting every single week. Uh, ordinance to appropriate. 90000 to provide an interest-free loan to the Princess Anne Courthouse Volunteer Rescue Squad 
uh, purchase of a new ambulance. The local residents have been funding the volunteer rescue squad for a very long time. Where are we supposed to come up with the money and why are we paying an interest-free loan on top of donating to the volunteers? I object to increasing debt and uh, tampering with the budget after it's finalized. Um, like I said, I attended the workshop. Y'all ended it early, which I taped. And now you want to have another one. So all this stuff was discussed. Okay, item seven. Accept and appropriate 24,956 from the Supreme Court of Virginia Drug Treatment Court Docket Grant 2020-2021 uh, Commonwealth Attorney's Operating Budget and authorize 25% in-kind grant to match. So that's about 50,000 by human, human services ray purchase of drug and alcohol testing. Um, yeah, there's been problems with human services and drug problems, alcohol problems. The other cities that handle their problems, they didn't uh, allow the alcohol sales, which is just changed to 11 p.m., you know, there's a lot of uh, problems associated with, with alcohol. Um, so I oppose more money. You have a budget, you should stick to the budget, and if you can't, you know, stick to the budget, then you've done something terribly wrong. Okay, I uh, call a public hearing on planning items. Uh, planning item number one. Okay, so no one else has signed up to speak on this? Ms. Not Messner, the, 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 the only the, items that are going to be pulled at this point, my understanding is number 8, number 12A, and 13. So you're the only speaker on all the other items for planning. So which one's 8 and what else? I'll, I can go through the list with you. Number 1 is the first item you need to speak on. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, James T. Cromwell, receiver for Shore Realty Corporation, a defunct corporation for street closures. Excuse me. Can we wait? Okay, sorry. Um, street closures of unimproved right-of-ways. Okay. Um, the right-of-ways are for access. They're there for a reason. We shouldn't be taking away right-of-ways. And a defunct corporation means that uh, you're giving this land to, to other tenants who, okay, so it's, uh, it's 375 square feet for uh, 217 75th Street, 250 square feet for uh, two properties at 75th, 250 square feet, um, on and on. It's 70, 74th through, set, well, 75th and 76th. Um, so you're, you're helping uh, the landowners, um, but you shouldn't be closing any right-of-ways. No street closures. I mean, 8th Street is closed, and that's used for, uh, for Mike Standing and all of his businesses to operate open uh, open bars. Okay. Um, anyway, I oppose Lynn Haven. That's Mr. Wood's district. Everything's here for approval. Check, 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 check. <coughs> Item two, Cromwell, receiver, Shore Realty Corporation, a defunct corporation. So that means our staff who doesn't come up with all the information that we need each month, each week, but they have time to look around for defunct corporations and, you know, sell the right-of-ways. Um, one of these is almost 2,000 square feet on 75th Street, and another one is uh, almost 1,200 square feet on 75th Street. So I oppose, I oppose these. Okay, item three, Bonnie Road, VB, modification of conditions, motor vehicle sales and service, and automobile repair on, on Bonnie Road. 
there's a lot of traffic in you know another automobile garage this is close to housing areas it's close to flooding and it's a lot of uh, a lot of unhealthy byproducts going into the storm drain. Everyone doesn't recycle properly. Um, you know, I was just at that intersection, and luckily I knew to get out of the way and not go through the intersection. The speeding in this city is crazy. We need to address the fact that the police are not stopping people for reckless driving. People, all these drive-by shootings, all these problems, and you just want to keep modifying conditions and adding new business. I oppose. Take care of the basic needs. Okay, four. Bonnie G. Bright Sand Company. Um, modifications, Ray Burrow Pit. And, you know, the one on Oceana Boulevard, that one's all leveled out. All the sand is gone. And we, we hire these companies. We buy sand from them, and they... They donate to certain council members. So, you know, I oppose these modifications of conditions. Okay, you said five was pulled? No, ma'am, five, okay, five is, is you're the only okay. speaker on. All right. Uh, Studio Evolve, LLC, Byler Lakes, conditional use permit. Uh, it's very important that we talk about conditional use permit because uh, I would like for the people who, who are aware of this meeting and know what's going on that one of the items on the agenda is to do away with conditional use permits for short-term rentals. Uh, what next? For everything? City Council isn't going to vote on anything? Okay, this one's for body piercing. Uh, I don't care what type of tattoo parlor it is. There's tattoos all over the place. And we supposedly have pandemics. What is the rush for all these new businesses? Uh, that's Rose Hall. That's Mr. Berlucci's. Okay. Um, six. Franklin Johnson Group and Development LLC, Birchwood Associates for a conditional use permit, housing for seniors and disabled persons. Um, Housing for seniors used to be 55 and up. Now it's 62 and up. And if anybody's driven over the Lesnar Bridge, which I don't even do anymore, that it's, you know, outrageous. You look right into the windows of the seniors that are 62 and up over there. And all these, um, all these developments add to the flooding. You can fix a few pump stations, you know, down the road. It'll take a couple years. But it's not going to fix the flooding with uncontrolled growth. So I'm in opposition. Okay. Item 7. Thank you, Mr. Dyer. Bamvo and... I can't pronounce all these names. Conditional use permit, short-term rental, uh, Centerville District. Um, you know, most of these people, they've come before you already, and they are investors, and somebody else is managing it. Uh, I need to bring up the elephant in the room, the crime, drive-by shootings, people being hit and run. The city is not <clears throat> addressing major things, and you're pushing through these short-term rentals. Uh, and I appreciate Ms. Henley's uh, comments. You know, what she's consistently stated, that we do not have enforcement staff, and I disagree a thousand percent that we should outsource, um, you know, checking on people who've already been renting these without permission. It's, it's the job of the planning department that's a lot of staff, um, and if they can't keep up, then just don't put all this stuff on the agenda. Then you won't have to deal with me. You know, make it, make it reasonable and advertise two weeks out so, you know, other people can come. So I, I'm in opposition of all short-term rentals for all the reasons that Ms. Henley stated. And 
you know, like I said, it's, it's the gold rush. And everybody who thinks, oh, it's okay, they're going to make money, wait till the next something in the water and see who's uh, in the house next to you. You know, er and no one's going to, it's going to be three per bedroom, uh, three cars. You know, there isn't parking for these places. Okay, number eight is one you said that was pulled, correct? Yes, number nine now. Okay. And number nine is on the agenda for deferral to October 20th. The applicants requested deferral. Right, I watched enough to, to hear that. And uh, I've been here when uh, he and he's had people um, speak for him because his English isn't that good. The one at 809 Vanderbilt. Um, why, why do they get deferral? Um, and you just, you know, keep putting it off. It's already been denied. So you give them time to, to fix it up and be in compliance. So I disagree. I think there's, there's like 2,500. And everyone in the city is affected by traffic and crime. And everyone should be notified. This should be on the city's page. Um, and if more people other than Ms. Henley would have town halls, you know, we could ask our representatives, uh, like Mr. Tower, who has yet to, to reply to any of my emails. Okay, number 10. Michael and Renee Fairchild, um, conditional use permit, uh, LLC, a corporation, you know, limited liability corporation. Short-term rentals, uh, this is the Beach District. Um, a and B on 12th Street. You know, you can't handle what you have, and 311 should not be taking these calls. Um, and it shouldn't be outsourced to other companies, which was brought up today. That's outrageous. Like I said, you know, you shouldn't be taking on more than you can handle and more, more than you can do to give us peaceful enjoyment in our neighborhoods and a safe city. Um, you know, one of the, who is it? Um, it's on the front page, the roller skating rink, SK8. That's an Israeli uh, company and they're, you know, our shopping centers, our property is, you know, being run and managed by people from out of the city, uh, out of the we state. Please stick to the item on the agenda, Ms. I Mesner. am short-term rentals. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I'm talking about limited liability and who you're, who's running these things. Okay, 11. Glad you think it's funny. Charity, Vigalo, conditional use permit. Short-term rental, um, Garrison Place, District Beach, Mr. Tower. Um, Y'all were arguing back and forth on what you're going to do and how you're going to uh, outsource, you know, people to take care of short-term rentals. If you can't take care of short-term rentals and you don't have, um, I mean, Ms. Henley brought up the debt collapse. That's not the first one. And there's a lot of fires. A lot of people that rent these things, they don't care. They're just in there and finding, bringing up, finding them. The money they make on renting these, some at um, Sandbridge were renting for like uh, 30000 a week. So a simple fine is not going to make them be in compliance. And changing it from uh, a criminal offense, which sometimes it is if somebody's rent threatening a neighbor when they ask them to please turn down the music or please, you know, not block their driveway or park in their driveway. So I oppose these. You're all liable for anything that happens. Not just the token no votes that don't count with the supermajority, but you're all liable for any crime that happens on these properties and any more debt collapse. Okay, 12? 12B, ma'am. 12 and 13 are being pulled. No. 12A is my understanding. 12A is being pulled. 12B. Okay, she's only 12B speaker is on. not. Okay, so and that's to defer indefinitely. 
Okay, so A is being deferred. No, ma'am. Okay, which, which one? Is being 12B is, the, is going to be deferred. Is, is the proposal is to defer that indefinitely. 12A, we have um, additional speakers on, so you can speak on 12B at this time. Okay, and then come back and speak on A. 12A. I'm 12A. sorry. No, 12B. Okay. 12A, we have other speakers on. All right. Okay. All right, 12B. 1903, Ray allowing, oh God, yeah, 12, 13, and 14 are the biggies. 1903, allowing short-term rentals as permitted uses in the old beach overlay. Everything in Virginia Beach is old beach. That was just created for the uh, form-based code. Um, so this is to amend city zoning ordinances. That should be, everything should be deferred until everyone is notified. We can be notified by mail. Uh, you should not be voting on something that you discuss and change. Sorry, Ms. Abbott. Can you wait until I'm finished? Okay. I don't interrupt when you're speaking okay um, yeah amend zoning ordinances this is a major item it should be a referendum to amend zoning um, so I'm in opposition to any of these changes because the full agenda was not available and there are a lot of experts in IT that were unable to open it. It didn't open until 1.30 today, and it's 653 pages. So uh, I'm strongly in opposition, and Mr. Tower is bringing up all of these. 12, 13, 14. Um, requested by Mr. Tower. Okay, 13. No, ma'am. No, it's that's being pulled. Okay, that's 13's being pulled. 14 is the next item that you are speaking on. And wasn't okay. that deferred to? Okay. So deferring that this one's going to be deferred indefinitely, or that's the proposal at this point. Okay, which, what's that? 14, ma'am. Right, but what were you saying about 13? Nothing. Okay, all right. So, ordinance to establish. Transitional rules for the review of conditional use permits for a property in the old beach overlay. Reference Mr. Tower. You know, as I've stated, I lived there. We had problems with uh, rowdy behavior, parking issues, and old beach. All they do is, you know, block certain streets and block parking, but then there's less and less parking. So you can't have overlays for some areas. Uh, Sandbridge tried to fight this. Um, you can't just keep changing, um, changing rules when you can't handle what you have. And part of this is, um, is so the city council doesn't have to vote. City council should vote on everything. We pay your salaries. We don't pay the salary of planning. So city council should be, um, voting on everything that comes before you that affects public safety, public health, and our quality of life in uh, wherever we live and wherever we, we travel. Okay? Thank you, Ms. Messner. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Wood, uh, if we can do the consent for ordinances and resolutions. Yeah, and Mr. Mayor, I just want to address something to the city clerk. Uh, what time do you put the agenda out? Um, Vice Mayor, thank you. The uh, brief agenda was emailed to a list of citizens, Ms. Messers, on that um, on Thursday afternoon at 107. The full agenda was available on eDocs Thursday afternoon at 319 for everyone to see. So it's posted online prior to you all receiving your agenda books. So that's what I thought. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Mayor, move for approval under the consent agenda the following items. Under ordinances and resolutions, item I-1, ordinance to extend the provisions of the ordinance previously adopted on March 31st, 2020, Ray ensure continuity of government during the COVID-19 disaster. Item two, resolution to amend the due date for recommendation of the Convention and Visitors Bureau to Community Task Force. 
Item 3, resolution of renew permit to allow ISC Medical Transport LLC regarding operate in the city. Item 4, <coughs> resolution to authorize distribution of a preliminary official statement and other actions re issuance of water and sewer revenue and refunding bonds series of 2020. Item 5, ordinance to carry forward and appropriate $2,253,411 to the FY 2021 operating budget rate purposes previously approved in 2019-2020. Item 6, ordinance to appropriate $90,000 to provide an interest-free loan to the Princess Anne Courthouse Volunteer Rescue Squad and Fire Department Ray purchase of a new ambulance. Item 7, ordinance to accept and appropriate $24,956 from Supreme Court of Virginia Drug Treatment Court Docket Grant to the FY 2020-2021 Commonwealth Attorney's operating budget and authorized 25% in-kind grant match by Human Services rate purchase of drug and alcohol testing supplies. I open a public hearing on planning. Under planning item J1, James T. Cromwell Esquire, receiver for Shore Realty Corporation, a defunct corporation for street closures of unapproved rights away. Uh, a, 375 square feet adjacent at 217 75th Street, B, 250 square feet adjacent to 215A and 215B, 75th Street. C, 250 square feet adjacent to 213, 75th Street. D, 250 square feet adjacent to 211, 75th Street. E, 250 square feet adjacent to 209, 75th Street. F, 250 square feet adjacent to 205, 75th Street. G, 1,763 square feet adjacent to 203, 75th Street. H, 250 square feet adjacent to 218B and 218A, 76th Street. I, 300 square feet adjacent to 216A and 216B, 76th Street. J, 250 square feet adjacent to 214, 76th Street. K, 325 square feet adjacent to 210, 76th Street. L, 312 square feet adjacent to 208A and 208B, 76th Street. M, 413 square feet adjacent to 7500 Atlantic Avenue. Item 2, James T. Cromwell Esquire, receiver for Shore Realty Corporation, a defunct corporation for street closures of unimproved right of, of improved right of way, A, 1170 square feet adjacent to 204A and 204B, 75th Street and 202 75th Street, B, 105 square feet adjacent to 7406 Atlantic Avenue. Item 3, Bonnie Road VB LLC for conditional, for modification of conditions, Ray Motor Vehicle Sales and service an automobile repair garage at 3825 Bonnie Road in the Lynn Haven District. Item four, Bonnie G. Bright Sand Company, Bonnie G. Bright for modification of conditions, Ray Burrow Pit at 200 Princess Sand Road in the Princess Sand District. Item five, Studio Evolve LLC, Buyer Lakes LLC for conditional use permit, Ray Body Piercing Establishment at 512 South Independence Boulevard in the Rose Hall District. Item six, Franklin Johnson Group Management and Development LLC Birchwood Associates LLC for conditional use permit for housing for seniors and disabled persons at 3808 and 3820 for Jane Beach Boulevard and 309 and 329 Birchwood Park Drive, Glen Haven District. Item 7, Pham Vo LLC, Hin Pham and Quang Vo for conditional use permit for short term rentals at 5120 Settlers Park Drive in the Centerville District, noting that Ms. Henley and Mr. Berlucci are voting nay. Item 9, uh, and this is consent for deferral to 10-20-2020, uh, uh, conditional use permit for a short-term rental at 809 Vanderbilt Avenue. Items 10, Michael and Renee Fairchild, MLFW LLC, for conditional use permits for a short-term rentals at 836 12th Street, 838 12th Street, noting that Ms. Henley's voting nay. Item 11, Charity Figolo for conditional use permit for a short-term rental at 448 Garrison Place, in the Beach District, noting that Ms. Henley, Mr. Jones, and I am voting nay. Item 12, City of Virginia Beach Ordinance to amend City Zoning Ordinance CZO Sections B, 1903, Ray, allowing certain short-term rentals as permitted uses in the Old Beach Overlay District, and that's consent for indefinite deferral. Item 14, consent for indefinite deferral, City of Virginia Beach Ordinance is to establish transitional rules for the review of conditional use permits for a property in the Old Beach Overlay District. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Madam Clerk. Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Berlucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of 11 to 0, you've approved the consent agenda as read by Vice Mayor Wood, noting the nay votes. 
Okay, do we, of all ordinances and resolutions, we're on consent. Yes, yeah, so we're on planning eight. Okay, now we're going to move to planning, and that would be item number eight, the Good Manor Group, LLC, conditional use permit, raise short-term rental at uh, 1721 Ruger Street, Hempsville. The applicant, Denise Phipps. Ms. Phipps is online. They did say they were representing, they didn't say they were doing WebEx, so can you unmute her? Ms. Um, Ms. Phipps is participating in WebEx. If you could please pause three seconds before beginning your comments. Hello? Hi, this is Denise Phipps. We can we can hear you in the council chamber. Hello, this is Denise Phipps. Ms. Phipps, please begin your comments. Hi, this is Denise Phipps. I um, I didn't really have any comments. I wasn't sure. I'm just attending the meeting to see if I have approval. Is there an issue with my property for the conditional use permit? All right, I'll move. Council. Why does this thing oh. Kevin, can she talk? Can Miss Abbott talk now? Go ahead. Miss Abbott. Hi, Ms. Phipps. Um, the, the question we have, the concern we have with your application is um, we're trying to get clarification if, in fact, your property has been rented prior to you receiving the conditional use permit as a short-term rental. I, I had my application. I had everything in. And when I, you know... I've been in the process paying my taxes and everything the whole time. Uh, while I was in the process, I was told that I was allowed to do that when I spoke with Kevin at the planning commission. So yes, I have had it. Can, can you potentially tell me when, I guess, when did you start your process? How long, how long have you been utilizing the property as a short-term rental? As soon as I, you know, went down and applied for my business, I don't know if you call it licensing or whatever it was to set up for my tax returns, which would have been in April of um, 2019. And then I was notified uh, about the occupational permit. And as soon as I was, then I made my application. We had a lot of delays just due to the COVID on my hearing, or I don't know what you call it, my meetings. And and is the you are not using the property as a residence at all? Is that correct? Um, I used to live in the home. I actually lived in Virginia Beach for over thirty years. I have really close relationships with all my neighbors. Um. I've really had no issues in the time that I've had everything been running. They have my phone numbers. They have, um, you know, if and honestly, I've never even gotten a call. They actually wrote me letters um, in favor of me um, having the short term rental. Um, my property looks, you know, really nice and I've complied with everything I needed to comply as far as parking. That actually has alleviated the neighborhood quite a bit because there is issues on that street for parking. So I have, you know, all the required parking that I'm supposed to have. Um, my upkeep of my property. I have very strict rules and guidelines. I have a ring. I honestly believe that I'm, you know, providing a service. I know that short-term rentals gets a negative view because of news headlines. 
but I have a lot of military families that come to see their sons or daughters before they deploy and they want to have home cooked meals and just have time together. I have, you know, I really have not had issues and I keep very strong tabs on the process of who's going to be in the home. I'm very respectful about my neighbors. Um, and, you know, I, it's been a good experience. I'm Paul's. Sorry. I, I just have one more question. You, you're not local currently, so who are you having um, manage the property? A property manager that she manages my cleaning services, any issues that may arise. I also have uh, the neighbor just to the right of me if you are facing the property. She also, and she's home all the time she's retired. And, you know, like I said, I actually know all my neighbors. They all have my phone number. I also have a ring um, on there, which I do monitor for the check-ins and checkouts. And I also monitor, you know, if I were to have any reason to think something may be occurring, uh, I would be monitoring that. I have things in place where the guests have to tell me um, who is attending anyone over the age of 18. And, uh, you know, I, I find a lot of time that kind of gets rid of people because they don't want to answer that, you know, if there's going to be something maybe. So to be honest, I've really not had, I've had a couple small things that I was able to nip in the bud before anything ever got uh, started. So, you know, I follow all the city guidelines that's posted in my house rules. I have those also uh, sent to the guests. They get that, you know, actually more than one time and they get reminded right before they check in. So I have, I've lived in the area for 30 years and I am in the area quite a bit back because my permanent mailing address is in Georgia now, but I probably spend six months out of the years in Virginia because I still have business there and I still have property there uh, besides my short term. I have long-term rentals as well. And um, I really have not had any issues whatsoever. Matter of fact, you know, my neighbors, they, we, we just talk all the time and, and we don't, they, a matter of fact, I have a, uh, people that are staying there right now that my neighbors have met and they messaged me that they did, you know, it's, it's a very friendly atmosphere. She's not not to belabor the point, but can you tell me, is your property manager a local company or is it an individual? Can you be a little more specific? Individual, an individual person. Uh, Leah King is her name. A professional in, in the real estate world or at all, or is she, is she a friend? I'm just, we're, we're having a lot of concerns with uh, these types of uses in residential areas when there can't be an immediate response and there isn't somebody who can handle the situation quickly and appropriately. So that's, uh, that's what I'm trying to drive at. Actually, I do the managing, believe it or not, a lot of it from long distance. So I have all the communications with the guest and I am actually still a licensed real estate agent in Virginia Beach. And I've had long-term rental properties for over 20 years, so I'm used to managing people. And so I actually manage the bookings. I manage all the dialogues with the guests, uh, the, ch the check-ins and check-outs, uh, things like that. I actually can manage uh, no matter where I am. But if there were an emergency where I needed somebody to get there, you know, quickly for some reason, that's what I have her for. And she's, you know, aware of that and knows that, that, you know, within 30 minutes, if she would needed to get there, she could be get there. I also have a backup with my neighbor as well, that if there was something immediate that needed to take care of. So I really do have all my bases covered as far as that goes. Thank you. Mayor, the next speaker is Barbara Messner, and she's the only other speaker, actually, sir. This is um, Kempsville District, uh, Ruger Street. Is that correct? No, uh, I mean, we've gone over yes, some... Yes, ma'am, number okay. eight. 
1721 Ruger Street. All right. Because the person's name isn't on here. That's why it gets confusing. But these are investments. And this person has females that are within 30 minutes away. That's not, you know, this is just an investment. And if there's a serious problem, 30 minutes is too long. Um, I mean, who's going to inspect it before, uh, before these people move in? And who's going to decide whether, whether they're coming from a hot spot? What if we have another, you know, back and forth with the COVID? You know, um, people shouldn't be coming from hot spots. And people shouldn't be destroying neighborhoods. We don't have affordable, we haven't had affordable housing for a long time. It's one reason I don't still live at the oceanfront. It's not affordable. Plus, there was crime in, in the 90s when I left the immediate. Um, so she's been in violation. You're aware she's been in violation since April. She's renting it right now. And she doesn't have, um, you know, it, it's all going to fall on 311 and 911. And, you know, when they did the prayer and everything, I would, I think it's important that we say a prayer for our police and firemen and our first responders. You know, they're the ones that have to handle all these problems yeah. and they're overworked. I appreciate that very much, Ms. Mesner, yeah. but okay. please stick but to it the item. But it applies to what they have to do. On top of all these drive-by shootings and everything, do you think they're really going to have time to go, um, you know, take care of problems with short-term rentals when there's over 3,000 that we know of? So you admit that you don't have staff to take care of it. You want to keep outsourcing to find out if they're operating illegally because the current staff is not able to do that. So I just think we need to quit having these on the agenda. And this should be a denial. Let them come back in a year, you know, after, you know, not in a month or a couple weeks or whatever. It should be a denial. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the speakers, sir. <coughs> okay, Ms. Abbott. I hate to ask, but Bobby, um, I have a couple questions. Of, of me? No, of Mr. Tahan. <laughs> Um, in looking back through the, um, the item in our packet, I can't find, do we require them to tell us who their on-site property manager is? We do that at the final registration process. Once they get the conditional use permit, they provide us that information. And is there a, does it just have to be a name and a number? Is that basically all it is? Currently how the ordinance is written, it says that someone has to be able to respond within 30 minutes. Uh, not, it's not physically respond. So they would give us a contact person. A lot of the times, typically, they would provide themselves or a local contact, similar to as was presented. Right, but there's no way for us to know that that person can actually respond. Other than we have the contact information, that's the person we will contact. Okay. Um, well, I am honestly very torn about this application. I, I'm a little uneasy about the owner being out of state and and the ability to manage the property remotely um, in the event there is a need. This is a pretty dense neighborhood. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think I'm going to move to deny the application. Second. Okay. Uh, any other discussion at this point? Okay, Madam Clerk. The motion is to deny. Yeah. And Mr. Vice Mayor, would you second? Thank you. Councilman Rabbit? Aye. Councilmember Bellucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of 11 0, this application has been denied. Okay, moving on to item number 12 of uh, 12A City of Virginia Beach Ordinances to Mend City Zoning Ordin Ordinance Sections. Uh, 104 Ray allows civil pen penalties for the violation of section 241.2.2 pertaining to short-term rentals. Mm -hmm. 
Elaine Feckety is the first speaker registered, but I don't see her in attendance. So the only other speaker at this point is Barbara Messner. Okay, like I said, I listened to part of the uh, informal, and you know, as I've stated before, all of this should be discussed. This shouldn't be something that you keep changing and amending, and then you bring it up for a vote. Nothing should be voted on today. And um, <clears throat> let's see, civil penalties. I just stated, uh, and Mr. Tower. You know, um, or the beach district person has major, major conflicts. Um, and we have a city attorney who should be taking care of all of this. But civil penalties, when people are making um, 30000 a week, uh, 10000 a week, whatever, a civil penalty is nothing. You can't take away the criminal penalty because there's no, there's no, uh, you know, no one's going to take it seriously if it's not a crime to threaten your neighbor or to block their driveway and there's no one that can do anything for, you know, I heard somebody talking about 311 doesn't work on weekends. They do work on weekends. But, you know, they shouldn't, you know, this, you couldn't, you can't keep adding uh, duties to 311 and you shouldn't outsource uh, public safety to anyone. You shouldn't add the burden to our public safety people. And um, you know, this shouldn't be approved today. You're amending city uh, zoning ordinances. Uh, you shouldn't have been approving all of these. And to make it a civil penalty, I disagree 100%. Just because it makes it easier for staff, it doesn't make it easier for the people who are living there and dealing with the problems. So I object. I also heard people talking about, uh, you know, this is an economic driver. You know, how you make your money and, um, you know, who's subsidized. I'm tired of subsidizing the, um, the resort district, the alcohol lobby, you know, the Dominion Energy Lobby and everyone else. Um, I oppose corporate welfare for anyone, and I object to the city not prioritizing public safety and public health and fixing the flooding issues. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the speakers, sir. Okay, Mr. Tower, you brought this forward. Uh, move for approval. Second. Uh, motion for approval and a second. Any other discussion? Madam Clerk. Councilmember Abbott. Aye. Councilmember Lucci. Aye. Councilmember Henley. Aye. Councilmember Jones. Aye. Councilmember Moss. Aye. Councilmember Rouse. Aye. Councilmember Tower. Aye. Councilmember Wilson. Aye. Councilmember Wooten. Aye. Vice Mayor Wood. Aye. Mayor Dyer. Aye. By a vote of 11 to 0, we've approved the um, 12A, which is the ordinance to amend the city zoning ordinance regarding civil penalties for short, regarding short term rentals. Okay, uh, finally, uh, item 13, City of Virginia Beach Ordinance to amend City uh, Zoning Ordinance, Section 241.2, re renovation, re revocation of grandfather status and City Council findings. The first speaker is Betsy Atkinson. Welcome. Good evening, City Council members. I'm Betsy Atkinson here to speak on the grandfathering issue. Um, first, I listened to the earlier session today, and um, Mr. Tower, I'd like to thank you for recognizing the economic impact of uh, so short-term rentals on our economy and making the, the balance between the economic issues and, and positivity and the relationship of the homeowners in the certain areas. So I thank you for that. Um, and also I'd like to thank uh, Councilman Jones and Wood for the overlay districts. I think this is a great idea that um, is going to um, eliminate a lot of issues we have out in the Kempsville, Centerville, and other areas of the city. Um, and where the short-term rentals should be are along the beaches, um, shore drive, and... But um, 
But Mr. Tower, I'm totally opposed to grandfathering um, your amendment to 241.2. I've been doing uh, short-term rentals with Vacanson Realty since 1943, not me, the company since 1943. But um, we've had, you know, over 100, 150 rentals that we manage, and a lot of them have been uh, with us for years, 20, 30 years. People come down from Richmond, they love it. The minute they said we have to have a register of the state of Virginia with the common, with the commissioner of revenue, I went right down and registered all of my um, properties. And I was reassured that they were all grandfathered. And I accepted that and I understand that and grandfathering runs with the land to be able to come back and tell somebody that's been running their property for years and maybe they have to move into it because they have a sick father or there's a, a situation and then two years later they can't run it anymore now i do know that in the overlay district proposed it would be a permitted use so i'm assuming that that would still take place but um i would like to ask every council member to oppose this um amendment and to vote against this uh, restriction on grandfathering we're, we're doing just fine we don't need this um this uh, legislation. Okay, thank, thank you. you. The next speaker is Conrad Agresti. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time reading your writing. Sorry about that. And then after Mr. Agresti is Michael Meg. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Good members evening. of the council. My name's uh, Conrad Agresti. I'm the Vice President of Croatan Civic League. I want to start by thanking Councilman uh, Tower and Moss for responding to my earlier communication to you all. At that time, we were not aware that Croatan had been removed from the STR Overlay District candidates, so I was a bit tuned up, and I apologize for the tone of that message. Nevertheless, I'm here this evening in favor of revocation of the grandfathering clause to City Zoning Ordinance 241.2. Croton Civic League opposed the original grandfathering clause because we predicted what ultimately occurred. A deluge of conditional use applications that would have been overwhelming even without the pandemic exigencies. Now, Ms. Eckerson uh, testified a moment ago that they've been running short-term rentals since 1943. Well, that tells me that from 1943 to 2019, those were being operated illegally because they were not allowed to have those in a residential district. What I'm here tonight to say is that Croatan Civic League supports conditional revocation of the grandfathering clause as uh, published online. We think that's a prudent move we think that no one should have carte blanche ad infinitum to go on without being reviewed. We think that conditional use permits have their rightful place and should not be rescinded. We also oppose any future designation of Croton as an STR overlay district without a referendum of the residents. Lastly, we invite uh, Mr. Dehaney and any council members who have not yet visited Croton to come down to the public beach there and see our lovely neighborhood for themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker is Michael Meg, And then Barbara Messner. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, good evening. I'm Mike Maggie, and um, I'm here in opposition to item 13. I'd like to thank all of you for your hard work on this short-term rental issue. I know it's been very contentious and we've been at it for many years. But I'm here tonight to uh, fight for the right to operate, to operate my legally non-conforming grandfathered STR under the current zoning ordinance that this body passed less than a year ago. I also spoke at the Planning Commission on this item and they rightly voted no on that on tw in two different um, times. Um, and as with all down zonings, um, I believe letters should have been sent out to the affected owners informing them 
of the proposed restrictions to their rights. We may have had more speakers if, we, if they'd have known more about it. And as I understand it, the council is planning on limiting my property rights by saying that if I don't use my STR property for two years or it's vacant, I will lose the right to do so in the future. Now, if that's true, it would be like telling someone that has a duplex zoned lot that if you don't build a duplex in two years, you're going to lose that right. That, that would be taking, that's a taking of someone's personal property right. We have vested rights in these properties, and that would be the same case if you're limiting the STR owners. I mean, I'd like to pose a couple um, questions. What if a pandemic hit us and we could not rent our properties in the short term by no fault of our own for two years? Would we lose the right? Would we lose our vested right to do so? What if my parents need to move into that property and I can't rent it for a few years or I choose not to rent it? Would I lose my right to do so in the future? What if the market changes or if I just choose not to rent that property for whatever reason for two years? Would I lose my right, my vested right that was given to me by the city of Virginia Beach? And if any of those scenarios are true, then that would be a taking of my property rights granted to me by the city of Virginia Beach. And I would be due just compensation. I hope we don't have to challenge these decisions in the future. I understand that you have the right to change future STR regulations and conditional use permits. But the legally non-conforming grandfathered properties should not be affected. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Barbara Messner. And after Ms. Messner is Doug Houston. Ms. Messner. I appreciate uh, the Croatan speakers. And, you know, as far as the grandfathering, um, you know, this there's like a waiting list of people. And, you know, the statement that what they've been doing, you know, has been illegal, no one's addressed that. And the Atkinson family, that's one reason there hasn't been any year-round uh, affordable housing at the North End, because they've been doing summer winter, which was already a big problem. And then, you know, everybody started building bigger and bigger properties there. It's like mini hotels down there. So it's not, you know, a normal neighborhood anymore. And I appreciate the fact that some people from Croatan, you know, want to protect their neighborhood. Um, and when I speak out against these, some people are very good tenants. They, they monitor who comes in. They wouldn't be renting during a pandemic. And they shouldn't be suffering for everybody who's signing up just to you know, be an investor and take over our neighborhoods. But, um, yeah, the Atkinson family also has Sandbridge Blue and, you know, everything changed. Instead of handling all the problems with the Sandbridge problems, you turned it over to the legislators and, you know, created all these other problems for us. So, I'm in opposition and you know, if you've made a mistake, we have, like they said, pandemics. We also have serious crime, deadly serious crime that you're not addressing. You want to take out money for extra staff to take care of this, but you can't address, um, you know, the problems for, for decades, the police asking for help. So I oppose because eventually it falls on their shoulders one way or the other. Thank you. The last speaker is Doug Houston. Welcome. Thank you, Doug Houston, proud owner of a short-term rental in Ocean Park for about a dozen years or so. Um, so I thought about uh, this proposal uh, tonight. I am against it. Um, try to put myself in your shoes and think about 
any of the proposals and why they would be there. So going back to um, item number 12, to me, item number 12 solves a problem. Um, I, I, I was here quite a bit over the previous three years as the short-term rental discussion was had. And I remember one in particular that really stuck out uh, for any council members that were on council then, the one in Bay Lake Pines that I heard about, there was an absentee landlord that really caused a lot of trouble for that neighborhood. So I look at item number 12 and that solves that problem. It gives you additional enforcement rules and that's why I didn't come speak against that. I'd look at that and I think it's, it's helpful. I don't see what problem this is solving. I see this as taking away maybe rights that I already have, but I don't see what problem it's solving. If I decide to put a family member in my house for a couple of years and then want to go back to a short-term rental, um, it, it, by taking that away doesn't really solve anything. So I would ask as a minimum that, uh, well, I, I would ask that you just uh, vote against this proposal. if. If the council isn't ready to do that tonight, I would respectfully ask to postpone this and give the current owners an opportunity, you know, like a mailing to let them know about it. Um, like Mr. Meggie said, um, I, I really think that if a lot of the current owners were made aware of that, there would be more speakers against it at, uh, this evening. So appreciate your opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. Hey, Mr. Tower. Um, I f first want to say a couple of things. Uh, I think Mr. Agresti was um, comments about Atkinson and renting illegally should be corrected. Uh, during that time, I doubt very seriously there were any restrictions on short-term rentals that weren't adopted till recently. So I don't believe the Atkinson Company, which are one of our oldest and finest uh, corporate citizens in Virginia Beach, I can't let that pass without correcting that. And while I don't necessarily agree with uh, everything that's been said about the grandfathering, I do have some concerns about uh, those people that have been previously grandfathered and changing the rules on them. And I think I will, uh, I think if I, I will, uh, if somebody else wants to make a motion on this, they certainly will. I know some of you are interested in doing that, but I think I'm going to defer making a motion myself. Mm -hmm. no. Mr. Wood. Mr. Tower, would you consider deferring this and so we can consider it when we consider all the other items? I would. Okay. Uh, I, I, I will move to defer yeah. unless somebody uh, somebody really wants to hear it tonight. I don't want to. Second. Uh, okay. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Moss. I, I would agree with uh, Mr. Tower that we didn't enforce the zoning ordinances that we had and therefore we consciously allowed an activity to take place. But it is fair to state that our residential zoning does, does not today and has never allowed rentals for less than 90 days. We just didn't enforce it. But I think because we didn't enforce it, it is unfair to say illegal activities were taking place. I do concur with you on that. Uh, right. I stand but, corrected. As I, I said, think, I, I didn't think there was, but I'll stand correct. But, 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 I, but, but you are right. Many people, Sandbridge, you name it, were operating. It was standard practice, well-legitimate behavior. And, you know, sometimes bad laws don't get enforced. <laughs> No, thank, sir. Thank uh, unfortunately, you. You know, this is in council discussion. But I support the request for deferral. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. May I at least concede? Uh, 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 sir, 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 you had your opportunity with due respect. Okay. But, they're, but they're discussing my testimony, sir. Okay. Yeah, with, due with due respect, sir, you, you know, we're in council discussion now. Okay. So we're, we, we've had a motion and a second, Mr. Oh, Mayor. Any other discussion? Sabrina, can I oh, ask a Ms. question? Yes. Um, during um, this uh, proposed deferral, as some of um, the residents brought up, will there be um, some type of notification to uh, those individuals who will be impacted by this um, once it comes back from deferral? Yeah. I'm not sure we even know who they are. I think so. 
Will there be an effort made to find out who they are? And, and I think that's a good point. I think um, if there's a way to notify those who are being impacted, you know, we should try to do that. Is this a question? Yes. Yes. Uh, Councilmember Wooten, uh, technically because they are zoning ordinance text amendments and not rezonings, there is no legal requirement to notify specific subsets of, of people. However, uh, planning can make the effort as we move forward with uh, uh, Mr. Jones and Mr. Uh, Wood's proposal, we are required to notify very specific properties because of, if there is a rezoning. Uh, we can include a mailer uh, dealing with this issue as well to, to allow the public to have time to comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. And to the representative from Crowtan, once we uh, you know reschedule, you are certainly welcome to come back. Okay. Okay, Miss Henley. This though just would be treating short-term rentals in the same fashion that we would any other non-conforming use as it is right now if there was a non-conforming use that is a use that was not a by right use of that zoning and it did not operate for two years it loses its grandfathered status so we're already doing this with all non-conforming uses so this is not a taking is that right mr styles that is correct i don't believe there's a vested rights issue here because as mr moss correctly characterized this activity was never permitted before by grandfathering you were essentially uh, acknowledging that these were pre-existing non-conforming uses that you were allowing to continue so in my view, that does not create a vested right or would not create an opportunity for a taking. That is correct. Okay. Mr. Moss. I just want to remind people that only 250 of what we think are the 1,700 <laughs> grandfathered properties are registered. So we can notify 250 people. Apparently, we, we can notify some number between 250 and yeah, 1600. But, I'm not sure what that number is. But I'm is. just large part listening. If you have a grandfathered property and expect to be notified, I recommend you come down to the planning department and register your stuff so you'll be sure to be notified. Okay. It's too late. Okay. It's too late. Okay, at this point, yeah. Commissioner of Revenue, they can okay. still come down. And okay. That. At this point, Madam Clerk. Sure. So the motion is to defer indefinitely, correct? That is correct. Thank you. Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Bellucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of 11 to 0, you could defer this item indefinitely. Okay, there are no appointments tonight, but under unfinished business, we had requests from several council members. The chair will entertain a motion to recess into a closed session pursuant to the exemptions from open meeting uh, to section 2.3711A. Uh, the Code of Virginia is amended for the following purposes. Legal matters, consultation with legal counsel and briefings by staff members or consultants pertaining to the actual probable litigation where such uh, consultation or briefing in an open meeting would adversely affect the negotiated or litigating posture of the public body pursuant to uh, section 2.237A7, Ray Holloway et al., City of Virginia Beach. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Do I, uh, Madam Clerk? Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Bellucci just stepped out. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Nay. Councilmember Rouse? Nay. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. Eight to two. Okay, and then there are uh, any new business? Okay, at this point, uh, we are adjourned from the uh, formal session, and we will, uh, if we can, take a break, uh, you know, and uh, a short break while we transition and get folks out of the room and move it back into executive.